Hi, so now we will do section B which is a 40 marks of 2023 ICSC maths paper. Section A we have already done, you can refer the other video. So here the here we have questions from question 4 to question 10 and this is going to be slightly lengthy, rather very lengthy reason being these are all uh, subjective questions, there are no MCQs and each of these questions are sort of very strong in uh, uh, in terms of you know the uh, level of questions or the expectations you need to put all the steps right and do it in detail so first question is first question is about matrices okay and we have three matrices given A, B and C and I, I is the identity matrix which you know. So question says that A into B plus C minus 14 I is to be found. So what we will do is we will first find B plus C. So we know how to add the matrices B and C are given. We actually add individual elements. So first element gets added to first one of C, second one with second one of C as per row and column. So we got something for B and C which is 1 plus 4, 2 plus 1, 2 plus 1, 4 plus 5. So we got 5, 3, 3, 9 as the elements. And A, B, B plus C now we have to do. So we will multiply A with uh, some matrix of B and C. So we know how do we multiply? We do row to column. Okay. So first row goes with first column for the first element and so on for other uh, elements okay and we arrive at 1 into 5 plus 3 into 3 2 into 5 this way we arrive at 14 22 30 and 42 as the elements so now we know that identity matrices 1 0 0 1 okay so we will do 14 i 14 i is you are multiplying when you are multiplying matrices with it uh, with a coefficient or with a scale uh, with uh, any number or something which is constant then what happens is each element gets multiplied with the same number so 14 i is 1 into 14 and 1 into 14 0 into 14 0 into 14 now it's a simple subtraction of matrices so we have first one which is a b plus c which we derived above minus 14 i which is 14 0 0 14 okay so now it's a plain uh, subtraction. So, how do you do it? You subtract each element with the relevant positioned element in the real matrix, and this is the answer 0, 22, 30, and what will come here? 42 minus 14. 42 minus 14 will be 42 minus in 32 minus 4 is 28. Okay, so that's 28. This is our answer. Very interesting chapter it is. And 10th maths ICSC in CBSC the same chapter is in, in is in 12th grade so that is the challenge with ICSC you know you have almost everything in terms of uh, syllabus you know in of 11th and 12th CBSC it may not be extensive but the very fact that whatever little is there will require you to study more and you know absorb the concept now whether it is 2 by 2 matrix or 3 by 3 doesn't matter so now the question second one is abc the triangle whose vertices are given a b and c which is 1 minus 1 0 4 and minus 6 4 d is the midpoint of bc so what is the formula for midpoint midpoint of any two points x1 y1 and y uh, x2 y2 or x1 plus x2 y2 and y1 plus y2 y2 so first we will find the coordinates of midpoint d so midpoint d is 0 minus 6 by 2 4 plus 4 by 2 which is minus 3 4 you put any of those components as x1 any of those as x2 that doesn't matter because we are talking of uh, summing it up now we have to find what is the equation of the line that passes through d okay and which is median okay so equation of ad we have to find so we have coordinates of a and we have coordinates of d 
so a line passing through two points which are identified x1 y1 and x2 y2 is y minus y1 is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 into x minus x1 so here y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 is the slope of the line so anyway we have to find slope of a line passing through x1 y1 x2 y2 this is the formula so it's of the form y is equal to mx plus c i guess that is also the in your syllabus so we have now put the values okay so here we have taken x1 y1 as 1 minus 1 x2 y2 as the coordinates of d which is minus 3 4 okay so this is what we are have at which is 5x plus 4y cross multiplication we have done okay so That's five x plus four y. There are five minus four is equal to one. So that is the equation of the line. Now next question. Next question is in the given figure, O is the center of the circle. So O is the center of the circle. PQ is a tangent. So what is the property of a tangent? A tangent is always at ninety degree from the center. Okay, or from the radius. Okay, uh, that is meeting the tangent. And tangent meets circle always at only one point. There is no second point. Okay. So PQ is the tangent, which is meeting the circle at T. Okay. So OT is the radius. Okay. Yeah. But that aside, first we will do the first question. First question is what is the length of PT? Now we know there is a theorem which says that you know AB into BP is equal to PT square. Okay, if a chord is extended to meet a tangent, you know the chord length and the length outside is equal to square of tangent from that point to the circle. So nine into sixteen is PT square. So PT is equal to root of sixteen into nine, which is root of one forty four, which is twelve. Twelve twelve is a one forty four, right? So this question is that A. That means now you get one marks. Whether whatever happens next. Next is angle B A T. What is B A T? B A T is an angle extended by the chord B T, or rather the circle segment B T makes two angles. One is B O T. Which is the center of the circle, and one another is BAT, which is on the other side of the circle. So angle on the other side of the circle is always half of the angle in the center. Okay, but first we have to solve for BAT. So BAT is going to be half of BOT. Now what is BOT? We don't know BOT, right? So angle BOT is one of the angles of the triangle obt so if we know angle obt and angle otb we can find out bot right but we don't know any of these angles okay here yeah, the great thing is we know otp is going to 90 degree because there the tangent meets the radii okay so otp 90 ho gaya aur aapko dusra angle wahan par diya hua hai which is how much So angle OTB is equal to 90 minus 50 because we have BTP. BTP is 50 and OTP is 90. So OTB is 40. Now you are seeing that OB and OT are actually radii of the same circle, so they are equal. So under angle OBT, if OB is equal to OT, then angle OBT is equal to angle OTB. Isosceles triangle. Okay. So angle OBT is also 40 degree. So OBT is 40, OTB is 40. So then what is BOT? The third angle of the triangle BOT will be 180 minus sum of these two angles, which is 180 minus 80, which is 100 degrees. Okay. So if the angle at the center is 100 degrees, then angle at the other side of the circle is, or rest of the circle is. Going to be half of hundred degrees is fifty degrees. So now this question is answered. Okay. Now you call it T O B or B O T. It doesn't matter. 
the middle one really middle name middle character matter so it is the angle o we are talking about which extends on both the side by ot and ob the angle tab is half of 100 which is 50 degree now you see how many are answered bat is answered bot is answered abt is also answered abt abt is sum of abo and obt abo is 45 obt is 40 45 plus 40 is 85 correct I know I'm being a little fast, but that's why I'm a teacher. No, if you are sort of little not so clear, what you can do is you can stop the video and look at the details. All the details are there on the video. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. You know, as a student, you I I am okay if you are if you are taking time to uh, connect the dots. Okay, so now next question, question number five, part one. Mrs. Arora bought the following articles from a departmental store. There are two items she bought: hair oil and cashew nuts. And price of these items is given. Rate of GST is given. Discount is given. Now I'll tell you in case of discounts, what happens is GST is always charged on the money that customer paid you. That is the selling price, not the MRP. So MRP you can write anything. But these days you would have noticed, you know, there's a lot of discounts being offered by the seller to book lines. Okay, so here the discount offered was hundred rupees, MRP was twelve hundred rupees. So money paid for hair oil was eleven hundred only. So GST will be charged on eleven hundred rupees, which is at the rate of eighteen percent. So eighteen percent of eleven hundred is eleven hundred eighteen by hundred, which is what is percent? Percent means percent. Just divide by hundred, okay. So that is one ninety rupees. Now second item is cashew nuts. Cashew nuts she paid six hundred rupees. No discounts, okay. Rate of GST twelve percent. So what is twelve percent of six hundred? Twelve percent of six hundred is six hundred into twelve by hundred, which is seventy two rupees. So total how much GST she paid? She paid one ninety eight rupees plus seventy two rupees, which is two seventy rupees. So that is the total GST paid, right? Now next question: What is the total bill amount? Obviously, items she bought, she will pay for that, no? For items, how much is paid? Eleven hundred and six hundred, seventeen hundred, two seventy GST. Total bill is one nine seven zero rupees. Now the next question, second one: Solve the following in equation. Write down the solution set and represent it on the real number line. Question: The inequality given is minus five in bracket x minus nine is greater than or equal to seventeen minus nine x, which is greater than x plus two and x belongs to R. X is a real number. So what we'll do is we'll make two inequations out of this. The first one is first set of ones, and second one is second set of ones. This is minus x minus five into x minus nine is greater than or equal to seventeen minus nine x. Second set is 17 minus 9x is greater than x plus 2. Mind it. Wherever there is no equal to, don't use equal to. Wherever there is greater than equal to, use greater than equal to. Whether it is less than equal to or greater than equal to, it matters because equal to is another condition. So now we'll expand it. So minus 5x plus 45 is greater than equal to 17 minus 9x. Now 9x will take on this side. It will become positive. So 9x minus 5x is greater than equal to 17 minus 45. 45 will on this side will change the sign. So it becomes 4x is greater than equal to 28. That is one on the left hand side. So x is greater than equal to minus 7. Now we will solve RHS right hand side. 17 minus 9x. We took 9x on the other side. It became positive. 17 is greater than 10x plus 2. 15 is greater than 10x. X is less than 1.5. What does that mean? That means X lies between 1.5 and minus 7. Okay, and it is also it may also be equal to minus 7. So on the number line when you are representing this, on the minus 7 uh, notation, wherever there is minus 7, you will put a fill dot, not a blank dot. A blank dot is put when there is no equal to, when there is only up to that, but not that. Okay. Up to that and not that is different. Up to that and maybe that is different. So 
at 1.5 it will have a blank dot okay on the arrow so i'm making an arrow arrow extends on both the sides so x is between minus 7 and 1.5 a filled dot at minus 7 and an empty dot at 1.5 is that clear okay so the solution set is x is a subset of minus 7 to 1 point okay next question third in the given figure ac is parallel to d which is parallel to bf if ac is equal to 24 eg is equal to 8 gv is equal to 16 bf is equal to 30 there are three sub questions given prove the this to the prove the triangle gd is uh, similar to triangle gbf b is final find d third is d v y m now we will take first a question in question a b c prove that g e d is equal to g b f okay now we will take these two triangle g a g e d and g b f what do you see in g e d and g b f you see two vertically opposite angles are e g d and d g f it's like a cross In a cross, opposite angles are equal, vertically opposite. Yeah. So angle D G is equal to angle F G B, and D is parallel to E F. That means the transversal line D F is cutting two parallel lines D E and B F. So alternate angles are the. Uh, I mean, uh, alternate angles theorem and parallel line shows that angle E D G will be equal to angle. Will be equal to angle what? Angle G F B. Similarly, angle D E G is equal to angle G B F because they are on the opposite sides of the same transversal line D F and E B. Okay, so all the three angles are equal. If all the three angles are equal, that is the criteria for similar triangles. I have used the wrong sign. That is for congruency. In similarity, there will be only one inverted S types, you know, not the uh, equal to type sign, you know. So okay, I'll correct it in the next step. So next is next is that in a similar triangle, if D is the equivalent side of E, F B. D E by B F is going to be equal to E G by B F. Okay, all the ratio of all the three sides is equal. Using that property and putting value of E F, sorry F B, we work out the length of D. Okay. Now we'll take. Set up another two triangles: triangle ACB and triangle DEB. So even you can see that they are looking similar, but that's okay. In mathematics, you will have to prove everything. Looks don't matter. Okay. So now you see that angle B is common. Angle CAB is equal to angle EDB because there is one transversal line. AB, which is cutting through two parallel lines CA and ED, okay, angles on the same side of the parallel line, okay, and similarly, angle ACB is equal to angle DEB. Again, the same logic, okay, because the two lines are parallel, and the third angle is B, which is angle DB, E or angle ABC, which is common. So, if all the three angles are Equal, then what happens? This is one of the criteria for similarity. So the triangles are similar. Triangles are similar. Again, I use the same congruency symbol. I'll correct it. I use the eraser and clean it up. Okay. Always use that S as if it is lying horizontally. You know, little inverted. Okay. Hmm. So AC by DE is going to be AC by DE is going to be what? What you tell me?
AC by D is going to be hmm. what we have to find DB by AB we have to find so DB is the arm of triangle BDE okay and AC is the arm of triangle Oh no, AC by DE is going to be AB by DB. I have written DB by AB, that is wrong. That is AB by DB, okay. So please mind it because AC is on top, right? So the arm which is relevant to the triangle ACB will be there on top, okay. Hmm. So please make this correction, okay. Now next one. Next one is question 6. The following dis distribution gives the daily wages of 60 vector workers of a factory. So you have a question from stats now. Okay. So following distribution gives the daily wages of 60 workers. What we have to find? Use graph paper to answer this question. Take this, this, this. I have done this question, okay? Huh? Yeah. Not that I will do it later. That I wrote first and then I did it. Because this is not something for which you need a very extensive graph. And I presumed I have not measured it. So by, by approximation I am going to put these marks. I mean, uh, put these uh, notations 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, on the x axis, we'll write daily income. Okay. On the y axis, we'll write. Number of workers. Okay. So one axis will have one set of data, another axis will have another set of data. This is how you graph. Is that correct? Okay. So now we know that between 200 to 300 we have 6. That means what I'll do is, I'll first mark 2, 4, 6. Maximum value is what? 16. So maximum has to be 16. On the y axis. Okay. So you see I have taken up to 16 and then what I wrote before I will do it on a graph, I have removed it. I am doing it right here. So what I will do is I will create a bar graph. Yeah, I will create a bar graph. So between 200 and 300, what is the value? Number of workers is 6. So I will take it up to the height of 6 on y axis and on x axis I will mark two lines and create some kind of a bar. 200 to 300, 6 is the number of workers. Similarly for others. Keep a watch on the video. I don't want to disturb you. That's the reason I'm not talking. So this way I'm creating this graph right here without the graph paper approximations but I hope you know it sort of serves the purpose okay uh, even on a graph paper would have been similar okay
So what is the value from 500, 600, 400, uh, 500 to 600 is 60. So that is plotted. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. This is the graph we got. Maximum class range is 700 to 800 daily income. So all these classes they have represented through bar charts. Okay. So what do you see? So we have to draw histogram. We have to draw. What is the mode? Mode is something that appears again and again in a data distribution something which has maximum frequency which has frequent reoccurrence okay, which is prominent okay is called mode so what is the prominent class here which has 16 uh, frequency that is the most visible most frequent kind of daily income data sets so we have marked that as the mode class mode is 16 Next question. The fifth term and the ninth term of an arithmetic progression are 4 and minus 12 respectively. Find the first term, find the common difference and sum of 16 terms of the AP. So what is the formula for nth term? Nth term of an AP is A plus in bracket and minus 1D. Okay, we'll use that and write the equation for fourth term with A as the first term and D as the common uh, deviation. Okay, by which the series grows or declines. So, fourth term is, fifth term is A plus 4D, not fourth, fifth term. And the ninth term is A plus 8D. Okay, so we have two equation now and we have two values. So, what we'll do is we have two variables A and D. So for solving two variables, you need two equations. We have solved it using linear equations, elimination method or substitution method or whatever you know you find better. You can use that here. I have simply done subtraction. So what I got after subtraction is. What I got is 4D is equal to minus 16 or minus 4D is equal to 16. So D is equal to minus 4. Put that value, substantiate that value of D in any of the linear equations and you will find the value of A, which is what I have done. So I put D is equal to minus 4 in first equation. So that is A plus 4 into minus 4 is a minus 16 is equal to 4. So A is equal to 16 plus 4. When you change any element, whether it is algebraic or a number, from one side to the other, it changes the sign. Minus becomes plus, plus becomes minus. Okay. So I arrived in that. Now what is the sum of 16 terms? That is, sum of n terms is n by 2 in bracket 2a plus n minus 1d. I have used that and arrived at the sum. So that is 16 by 2 into 2 into into what was the first term that we put plus and minus and what is the division that we put we arrive at the answer to be 160 minus next is a and b are two points on the x-axis and y-axis so we have to do some set of questions based on this data that a is 0 4 and b is sorry a is 4 0 b is 0 4 what do what do we call as zero four? Zero is a zero is a point which is in the y-axis. So something in the y-axis will always have zero x component. Some point on the x-axis will always have zero y component. That I think you know. Okay. So from the diagram we worked out that value. The point which sits on AB in, and that cuts that divides AB in the ratio three to one. This question we did before, we, we got the coordinates of P first. Okay. So this question is answered. 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज मैन कवर्स अ डिस्टेंस ऑफ हंड्रेड किलोमीटर्स स्वाज आई वॉज टेलिंग यू द परपेंडिकुलर लाइन टू ए लाइन हैज अ स्लोप विच इज मल्टीप्लाइड विद लाइन इट इज माइनस वन सो इफ लाइन स्लोप इज एम वन सो इट्स परपेंडिकुलर लाइन स्लोप इज एम टू देन एम वन एम टू इज माइनस वन सो बाय दैट प्रॉपर्टी वी वर्क आउट द स्लोप ऑफ द लाइन दैट पासिस थ्रू पी बट परपेंडिकुलर टू ए एंड बी so the line perpendicular to a and b will have a slope which is minus 1 divided by slope of ab slope of ab is also minus 1 which we did before you know using y2 minus y1 by x2 minus x1 so the slope of the perpendicular line is minus 1 over minus 1 is equal to 1 now we know that equation of a line is passing through x1 y1 is y is equal to mx plus c if we know the if we know the slope of the line Here the slope of the line is one, and y is equal to one x plus c, where c is a constant. Okay. Now if we know coordinates of a point through which the line passes, we can replace the value of x and y with that coordinate, and we can find out the value of c. Okay. Now you would notice that this line passes through P, of which coordinates are known to you, which is one and three. So we will write. Three in place of y and one in place of x. Okay, and we arrive at three is equal to one plus c. So that means c is equal to three minus one, which is two. So the equations of the line is y is equal to one x plus two. One x can also be written as x. So y is equal to x plus two is equation of the line. Okay. I presume you have understood. Okay, now we'll move on to next question. In case anything is not clear to you, please feel free to write to me in comments, and I'll respond to you. Okay. very very lengthy portion section b obviously is 40 marks marks are very difficult to earn section a 40 marks were very easy to earn sort of free numbers and this one here it's taking a very very long time to write all the steps to use formulas theorems equations okay Now the next question is that a bag contains twenty-five cards numbered one to twenty-five. A card is drawn at random. What is the probability that the number on the card drawn is A, B, C? There are three subparts. Just three marks question. So each subpart gets you one mark. So bag contains twenty-five cards through one to Twenty-five, right? So that means card has numbers written on it. There are twenty-five cards: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, up to twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. Right? What is the probability of number on the card drawn is multiple of five, a perfect square, a prime number? So. You know how probability works. Probability is number of favorable events divided by number of total number of events. So if I am pulling out one card at a time, total number of events is twenty-five. Okay, and the first question is multiple of five. So what are the multiples of five? Which are the multiples of five from one to twenty-five? One is not a multiple. Two is not a multiple. So first multiple is five. Second one is ten. You know table of five. Just write the table and see up to twenty-five which all come. Five comes in table of five. Ten comes in table of five. Fifteen comes in table of five. Twenty comes in table of twenty-five. Twenty-five also comes. So there are five favorable events here. Okay. In total set of events to be twenty-five. So what is probability? Probability is number of favorable events divided by total number of events. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs>
that is 5 by 25 is equal to 1 by 5. Next one is a perfect square. Now see which are perfect squares from 1 to 25. You tell me. The, I will tell you the shortcut for this. Shortcut is you know the numbers, whole numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You do a square of those numbers. So once the square is 1, 2 the square is 4, 3 the square is 9, 4 the square is 16, 5 the square is 25. And that's it. That's the last card you have up to 25. So there are how many squares are there? Which are perfect square? That is 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, which is 5. So probability is number of favorable events 5, number of total number of events is 25, so 1 by 5. Right? Third one is a prime number. Which are prime numbers from 1 to 25? Which are prime numbers from 1 to 25? You know what is the prime number? A prime number is 1 which is divided by which has <coughs> factors which is more which is 1 and the other than that number. One more factor there. Because every number is divided by 1 and its own. So first prime number is 2. And in fact 2 is the only prime number which is even. Okay. So 2 has only 2 factors, 2 and 1, 3 has only 2 factors, 3 and 1, 5 has only 2 factors, 5 and 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23 are the prime numbers from 1 to 25. So how many events are there, favorable ones? 9. How many total events are there, 25. So the probability is number of favorable events divided by total number of events, that is 9 by 25. Okay. So that is the answer. The next one, question number 3. 2. A man covers a distance of 5. Something happened on the video side but got a little lagging but I think now it is stable. So, okay, it makes sense. It's readable. It really didn't impact much. Yeah. These are very lengthy videos. It will take, you know, very long time for me to redo it. Or even add it. So, I, I beg your pardon. Okay, but in terms of uh, visibility, in terms of uh, clarity, now the stable makes sense. So, question is, Man travels with some speed and covers a distance of 100 kilometers in some time. But if the same person travels by 5 km per hour more, that means slightly speedier, okay, then he will save 1 hour. That means, presuming that the speed is x km per hour, time taken in covering so 100 km distance will be 100 by x. Now if the speed grows by 5 km, that means now the new time taken to cover the same distance will be 100 by or 100 over x plus 5. So 100 over x plus 5 is lesser than 100 over x by how much? By 1 hour. Okay. So we are not getting into meter per second or anything. We will rather do it in kilometer per hour only. So everything we are going to put in kilometer and hour. So 100 over x is uh, 1 hour more than 100 over x plus 5 because if he goes speedily then he will cover faster. So 100 over x minus 100 over x plus 5 is equal to 1 hour. Now we will do LCM. LCM of x and x plus 5 will be x into x plus 5. Okay. So now x and x plus 5 are two separate entities just like elephants and camels. You know though there is a common x there but uh, you know, you can't really do an operation in terms of, you know, LCM part. So, it will be rather cross multiplication type. So, 100x plus 5 minus 100x will become the numerator by x, x plus 5 multiplied is equal to 1. So, we are trying to simplify the equation. We arrive at 100x plus 500 minus 100x which is 500 in numerator. 
and denominator is x x plus 5 is equal to 1 we'll do cross multiplication so x x plus 5 is equal to 500 x x plus 5 is x square plus 5 x is equal to 500 so x square plus 5 x minus 500 is 0 so now we'll find two roots for which the multiplication is minus 500 and the sum is plus 5 that is how we solve or we factorize quadratic equations right that is another chapter in your 10th ICS a very extensive chapter so which are those two numbers 25 into 20 is 500 so if we make 25 plus and 20 minus it becomes 25 minus 20 is 5 25 into 20 is minus 500 so these are the two roots so these are the two factors we will break up x in 25x minus 20x minus 500 so x square plus 25x minus 20x minus 500 is 0 x x plus 25 minus 20 into x plus 25 is 0 so the two factors are x plus 25 and x minus 20 so if either x plus 25 is 0 or x minus 20 is 0 now if x plus 25 is 0 x is equal to minus 25 which is not possible the speed can't be negated so x is equal to 20 km per hour is the only answer possible okay so that's it this question is done now next one next one is slightly interesting a rather a very interesting question this question uh, the same question has appeared in CBSE also few years back okay it is there in their textbook as well the concept here is that you have got a cylinder full of water at some level you know you don't know at up to what height you are only given the radius of the cylinder and what they do is they drop an object you know the principle of buoyancy you know the principle of Archimedes that if you put something in the liquid which does not replace the same amount of water as the weight of the liquid then what happens is that the object sinks so here this a solid object which we are referring to which is nothing but a hemispherical shaped object with a conical uh, top uh, this is put into the water obviously and it sinks and it sinks so what happens is some volume of water is replaced and that volume of water that is replaced you know increases the height of water column in the cylinder it could also be scenario if the, if the, if the cylinder was full of water water would have come out also ok so even that kind of questions they put but here they have put a question that the water has risen in the cylinder so what is the height of the water column and what is the height of the incremental water column in the cylinder so the principle applied or the concept applied here is volume of the solid object is equal to volume of the water replaced and that is the concept we will apply so first we will find volume of the solid object the solid object has a hemispherical uh, is a hemispherical object. So volume of hemisphere is what is the volume of hemisphere? What is the full volume of a sphere? That is 4 by 3 pi r cube, right? And what is the volume of a hemisphere? Hemisphere is half of 4 by 3 pi r. That is 2 by 3 pi r cube. Okay. And radius of the hemisphere is 7 centimeter. So it becomes 2 by 3 into pi into 7 whole cube. That is the volume of the hemispherical object. But one side of the or the other round side of hemisphere has a cone on top of it. A cone which has a height of 4 cm. So what is the volume of a cone? Volume of a solid cone is 1 by 3 pi r square h. Radius remains same of the cone and the cylinder or and the hemisphere. Okay. So if the radius remains same, that means 1 by 3 into pi into 7 whole square into 4 centimeter cube. So the total volume of the object is volume of the hemisphere plus volume of the cone. Right? So we'll add up these two volumes. What we are doing is we are adding up. Yeah. So it becomes 2 by 3 into pi into 7 whole cube plus 1 by 3 pi into 7 whole square into 4. You would have noticed I usually you know don't do calculations in the beginning. Reason being I know that at some point there will be common factors which will come out 
uh, or they will cancel out and it will become very easy to calculate without really doing numbers. So here I have taken 1 by 3 pi into 7 square that is a common between these two out. So what I am left with inside is 7 plus 7 into 2 plus 4. 7 into 2 is 14 plus 4 is 18. So it becomes 18 by 3. 1 by 3 was the coefficient outside it becomes 6 pi. 6 pi into 7 square which is 6 into 49 pi. Okay, that is how much? 15 to 6 is 300 minus 6. This is 294 pi. Okay, now these are the shortcuts I use for doing numbers. Because if I get down to multiplying 49, 49 into 6, I love to actually do numbers. Instead I multiplied 50 into 6, that is 300. Then I subtracted minus 1 into 6, that is 49 into 6 is equal to 294 pi. So that is the volume of the object. Now you know that the cylinder's volume is how much? Cylinder's volume is pi r square h. Right? Cylinder's volume is pi r square h. But we don't know the height of the cylinder. But nobody is asking you question related to cylinder. They are asking you how much water will rise. So, amount of water replaced by the by the um, solid object is the amount of uh, is the volume of the water replaced. So, volume of the water replaced presuming that is the height of h. Okay, so the volume of water replaced will be pi r square h. r is the radius of the cylinder. Okay. r is radius of the cylinder. So, water replaced is equal to volume of object. Now, we will equalize the two. We know the volume of the object is 294 pi and volume of water replaced will be pi r square h. So, pi is pi, r is 14. So, pi into 14 whole square into h. h is the height of the height of water that has risen okay, after the object is sunk into the cylinder. This is the height of the water column, new water column which is added. So, there was some water already in the cylinder but the water has risen. Okay, so, they are asking for what is the height of the Water that has risen, that is that has grown. No height has grown. Water has come more up. Okay, so we will equalize the two. Pi r square h is equal to pi into fourteen whole square pi. Okay, and that is equal to two ninety four pi. Right. Now when you equalize it, you will find out that pi gets cancelled out with pi. H is here. I have taken h as x. Okay, so h or x, whatever. The height of the water that has risen is going to be 294 divided by 14 into 14. Correct, 14, 294 is 14 to the 28 which is 2 and 14 one the 14, 21 by 14. And what is 21 by 14? 21 by 14 is going to be what is 21 by 14? 7 to the 14, 7, 3. That's 21. So, 3 by 2 or 3 over 2 is equal to 1.5. So, height of the water that has risen is 1.5 centimeters. Correct? I hope you enjoyed it. Okay. And we still have many more questions to go which is 9 and 10 which we will do. Yeah. Now. Now, we will move on to next one. So here the question is, okay, here the question says that we have, we have to find the mean of the distribution using the shortcut method. That is question number 8, part 1. Okay, and we have this mark distribution given, we have frequency given. So what is shortcut method? We will find deviation, okay. So let me draw the table. Okay, and next one. And the table will have how many columns? The table will have one, two, three, four, five columns. Okay. So 
and how many rows? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows. So, Slightly more space, right? Uh, okay. uh, to create currently. One, two, three, four, five, six. I got to you. So, hmm. how many columns? One, two, three, four, five. So, we need five. These things take time. So, only one we run. Can we also be a little differently now? Maybe share with you. One, two, three, four, five. And one. Right. So we will write. What are the numbers there? We have zero to ten. So first will be. So the marks, okay, 0 to 10, we have 0 to 10, okay, we have 10 to 20, we have 20 to 30, we have 30 to 40, we have 40 to 50, we have 50 to 60. And students, that is the class. Okay, we'll take midpoints. What is the midpoint of the class? That is 5, that is 15, that is 25, that is 35, and this is 45, and will be 45. What is the frequency? Frequency is 2, 4, 9, 13, 8 and 3 okay now we'll take one class which is like which has uh, which is in the middle okay so we'll take 30 40 as the median class you are presuming right so what is the midpoint of this is 35 okay so 35 will be the uh, base median we'll take and we'll find deviation of that and the class difference is class height is what is the class height what is class height? 10 and a 10. So we'll divide, we'll find a deviation which is x minus a and what is x? x is this, Melbourne. Divide by h. Okay. So what is the deviation in this case? In this case 5 minus 35 minus 30 by h is 10. So minus 3. Here we have 15 minus 35 minus 20 by 10. That is minus 2. 25 minus 35 minus 10 by 10 minus 1. Now that is deviation. Okay, 35 minus 35 is 0. 45 minus 35 plus divided by 10, that is 1. 55 minus 35 is 20 divided by 10 is 2. Okay, and then we will do sigma f di. Deviation ka jo sigma with frequencies multiplied. Okay, so 3 into minus 3 is minus 9. Then 8 into minus 2 is minus 16. Minus 14. Okay, 0, 4, and 4. Correct? Now, we will find the sigma f. So, what is sigma f? Sigma f is sum total of all the frequencies. Sigma f is what is sigma f? 
सिग्मा एफ एस थ्री एट इलेवन फोर्टीन ट्वेंटी फाइव नाइन थर्टी फोर फोर थर्टी एट टू फोर थ्री दिस सिग्मा एफ व्हाट इज सिग्मा एफ डी आई सिग्मा एफ डी आई इज माइनस नाइन माइनस सिक्सटीन माइनस ट्वेंटी फाइव माइनस ट्वेंटी फाइव माइनस थर्टी नाइन प्लस एट दैट इज माइनस थर्टी वन राइट नो द फॉर्मूला इज वट इज द मीडियम वट इज द मीन सॉरी तो मीन इज एक्स बार इज इक्वल टू ए प्लस सिग्मा एफ डी आई डिवाइडेड बाई सिग्मा एफ इन टू क्लास हाइट विच इज एच सो हेयर वट वी प्रोज्यूम टू बी दी मीन दैट वॉज थर्टी फाइव एंड देन यू हेव प्लस ऑफ माइनस थर्टी वन सिग्मा एफ डी आई डिवाइडेड बाई सिग्मा एफ विच इज फोर्टी एंड वट इज एच एच इज टेन इज द क्लास हाइट ओके सो दैट बिकम्स थर्टी फाइव what about minus i guess 7.75 so this becomes 27.25 ha yeah? correct 27.25 is the answer now we will do next one i'll change the color to we don't get confused ha yeah? now next question is now next question was what number must be added to each of the number 4 6 8 11 in order to get the four numbers in proportion so these four numbers are in proportion okay so what we will do we will do presuming that we are adding number h so we are doing part 2 now ideal would be you take print of this i'll what i'll do is i'll add the, this pdf in the uh, in this uh, comment uh, section and then what you do is that you take a print and then solve this then look at the solution it becomes easier uh each of the numbers 4 6 8 11 to get proportion right so presuming i'm adding x so this becomes 4 plus x this becomes 6 plus x this becomes 8 plus x is the same number being added 11 plus x now they are saying they are in proportion that means what This you divide by this, and this you divide by this. It should be same, right? Correct. So that we will do. That is, x plus six divided by four plus x is equal to eleven plus x divided by eight plus x, right? So now we'll do cross multiplication. So we have x plus six. X plus eight means x square plus fourteen x plus six into eight is forty eight. Right here it is x plus eleven x plus four that is x square plus fifteen x plus four into eleven is forty four so x square cancels on both the sides so fourteen x fifteen x so x is equal to forty four eight minus forty four that is four so if you add four now we'll cross check the answer so add four we get eight ten we get twelve we get fifteen right so fifteen by twelve is Ah, uh, three five zero fifteen three four zero. Here it is two four zero eight two five zero ten. So the answer is correct. Yeah. Always cross check your answer if you have time. Okay. So that marks the end of this question second. The third one is, third one is, ah, uh, using ruler and compass construct. You know, construction I cannot do online. That is very complex. So ruler and compass construct a triangle ABC in which AB is equal to six, BAC is one twenty, AC is equal to five. So what I'll do is first I'll take a first I'll draw a line of six centimeters and and then what I'll do is I'll I'll fill six centimeters in the compass and draw take two points A and B okay A and B and B A C that means B A C that means C A C A B so the angle A we are talking about is one twenty so using compass we'll draw one twenty Degrees. Okay, so line, and then we'll fill. What is given? Uh, AC is given. So we'll fill five centimeters in the compass and mark it here. Okay, that becomes AC, and then we'll connect the B and C. Now, what we have to do? Construct a circle passing through AB. So what is the circle passing through uh, three arms of the triangle? You take a perpendicular bisector of this line AC, and you take a perpendicular bisector of This line AB. Okay. How do you take perpendicular perpendicular bisector? Fill more than half of the length of the arm in the compass and cut on both the sides and then connect these two points. Okay, that's it. 
and wherever it is perpendicular bisectors means that is the center of the semi circle and then from that center you fill this length any any of the lengths okay say o ob oa or oc all three are equal distant okay and then from that will become the circle passing through ab and c okay and construct it yourself in case you find any challenges then you write to me in comments now next one is question 9 so we'll do question 9 question 9 question number 1 9 first part is root 2x2 plus 2x minus 1 2x plus 2 minus 2x minus 1 square root is equal to 3 using component dependent to solve for x okay Two x plus two plus two x minus one. Yes, the root two x minus divided by two x plus two minus two x minus one divided by root of two x plus two minus root of two x minus one, and that is equal to three. So, what is the property of component of dependent of the property is if a by b is equal to c by d, then a plus b divided by a minus b is equal to c plus d divided by c minus. D. This is the property we will use. Okay, I am not getting into derivation of this formula, but this is the property we will use. So, first we will add the both the points in above numerator that is root two x plus two plus root 2x minus 1 plus root <coughs> sorry 2x plus 2 minus of root 2x minus 1. Denominator will be root 2x plus 2 plus root 2x minus 1. Okay, minus root 2x plus 2. When the previous denominator will minus, minus will become plus. So it will come to x minus. Okay. So what do you observe here? This thing gets adjusted with this thing. This thing gets adjusted with this thing. Okay. So that is equal to three plus one divided by three minus. The RHS side is three, right? So what is left above here? Two root two x plus two divided by two root two x minus one, right? And that is equal to what? Four by two. Now two adjust with two. So what we'll do is we'll square up both the sides. This is equal to two. So that means on squaring, what do we get? What do we get? The whole thing becomes two x plus two divided by two x minus one is equal to two. The whole square is four. So that is now we'll do cross multiplication, right? Or we'll go further. That is four into two eight x minus four is equal to two x plus two. Now this two x will bring this side, so it will become eight x minus two x is equal to four plus two, or six x is equal to six. So x is equal to one. So in cross check this answer, this is correct. Okay. Now next one. Next one will be the term of the AP fifteen thirty forty five sixty is three hundred. Part two question number nine. Find the sum of all the terms of the AP. Fifteen, thirty, forty-five, sixty. Okay. Oh, I don't have space here. So what I'll do is I'll do the sum here. Okay. So we have we are doing ninth part two. Fifteen, thirty, forty-five, sixty are the terms, and three hundred. Which term is three hundred? Presuming nth term. So what is the formula for n? M a plus n minus one d is equal to n term. What is a here? Fifteen. What is n here? We don't know. What is the difference? Common difference. Fifteen, right? So that is also fifteen. Is equal to three hundred. So from here we get fifteen n is equal to three hundred. So n is equal to twenty, right? N is equal to twenty. So what they are saying next one? What is the sum of the, all the terms? Sum of the, all the terms will be. Sum of all sum of n terms is what? What is the formula for n terms? Sum of n terms is equal to n by two two a plus n minus one d, right? 
So what are the total number of terms? 20 by 2. What is A? That is 15. That is 30. Or we can use, in place of this, we can use A plus L. So that will make things easier. So I will say A is 15 and L is 300. That is the last term, right? That is 10 into 315. That is 3150. Okay? Done. Now next one. Ninth question is done completely. Ninth question is done. So we have 10th question which is of heights and distances or applications of trigonometry whatever you call it. Okay. And this is why we study trigonometry. Right? So we will do it here only. So we, what is the tower's height? 100 meters. What is 45? This angle of depression is 45 and 38. Right? So that means this is 45. And this is 38 because this line is drawn parallel to the ground. Now what is tan 45? What is tan 45? Tell me fast. That is equal to 100 divided by AC. So AC is equal to 100 divided by tan 45. Tan 45 is 1. That is 100 meters. So this is 100 meters. What we have to do is we have to find the distance between the ships. Okay. Angle of depression of the ships is given. What is tan 38? What is tan 38? Let me check the calculator. Tan 38 is 0 0.781. So, tan 38 is 0 0.781. Same formula. What is 100 divided by BC? That is tan 38. Okay. So, BC is equal to 100 over tan 38. That will be how much? 100 over 0 0.781. So, what is the total of AB plus BC that you work out? So, our answer becomes, uh, I don't know, I use calculator. Okay, I'll leave it here at this point. You can do it yourself. Okay. So, factor is completely using factor theorem. Okay. Now, this is 2x cube. We are doing question number 10. I guess that is the last question. Okay. So, question number 10 is, Question number 10, part 1, part one. factorize completely, what is the thing given 2x cube minus x square minus 13x minus 6, this is the sum, what we will do is we will presume x is equal to 1, if you put x is equal to 1, what happens, 2 minus 1 minus 13 minus 6, it is not becoming 0, so put x is equal to 2, x is equal to minus 1, we are trying to find a factor, okay. So, none of the factors are justified. Okay, it's not working out. It doesn't become 0. Now, we will try x is equal to 1 by 2. Let's see. 2 into 1 by 8 minus 1 by 4 minus 13 by 2 minus 6. 1 by 4 minus 1 by 4. No, it's not working out. 2x cube minus x square minus. Okay. If we take minus 1 by 2, this becomes minus 2 by 8. This becomes minus 13 by 2 minus 6 6 is I think then it will work out let's presume x is equal to minus 1 by 2 then 2 by minus 8 minus this square is always positive ok that is 1 by 4 ok minus 13 into minus 1 by 2 is plus 13 by 2 ok minus 6 now we will see what works out that is minus 1 by 4 okay so we will take 8 as the 4 as the same so it minus 1 this is minus 1 plus so we uh, we worked out x is equal to minus 1 by 2 you know makes the polynomial 0 that means 2x plus 1 is one of the factors so now what we will do is we will uh, write the polynomial in a form that 2x plus, 2x plus 1 comes out right so this is so for doing that what we will do is we will take 2x out so we will take x out so we get 2x square out 2x plus 1 that is plus x square but we had here minus x square because minus 2x square minus 13x minus 6 now we will do x square 2x plus 1 minus x that is 2x plus 1 that is minus x. Now here it is minus 13x. So what is left is minus 12x minus 6. So now we will do x square 2x plus 1 minus x 2x plus 1 minus 6 and we get 2x plus 1. 
right so now we'll put all of this together x square minus x minus 6 okay and 2x plus 1 so which are the factors of x square minus x minus 6 so minus 3 and 2 are the factors which multiply to become minus 6 and add up to become minus x so one factor is x minus 3 so we will write x square minus 3x plus 2x minus 6 now we are breaking up this one ok so that becomes x x minus 3 plus 2x minus 3 so which are the three factors of this polynomial this becomes x plus 2 x minus 3 and third one is of course 2x plus 1 so this is how we factorize the polynomial this is the answer now next question is <coughs> sorry next question is use graph paper to answer this question during medical checkup of during medical checkup of 60 students in a school weights were recorded as follows weight is 28 to 30 number of students 30 to 32 number of students and what we have to do is we have to find we have to draw an ogive so drawing OGIV at 2 cm is 2 kg along one axis, 2 cm 10 students along the other axis. You have to use the graph to find these three questions A, B, C. Now below I have tried to draw the graph. Okay, not exactly as per 2 cm is equal to 2 kg, but that should give you an idea. So what we'll do is first we'll make a table which will have cumulative frequencies marked. So cumulative numbers are in table 3. So 28 to 30 you have two students, 30, 30 to 4. So I have added up, it becomes 6, 30 to 34, 10, it becomes 16. So cumulative numbers marked out to a total of 60 because total number of students is 60. So we will mark that on y axis. And on x axis we have marked weights. So if you see, we will mark individual points. So for 30 kg weight, there are 2 students. So 30, y axis 2. Next is 32, 32 is for 6. So 32 and 6 marked there. 34 and 16. 36 and 29. Okay, 38 and 44. Okay, this way. These are the coordinates now. Okay, 30, the upper uh, of the class and the cumulative numbers. 32, 6, 34, 16, 36, 29, 38, 44, 40 for 53, 42 for 58. If you see it here, I have marked it. 40 for 53, 42 for 58, 44 for 60. So, the upper boundary of the class and the cumulative number uh, associated with that. Once you mark this, we will connect this using a rough line which I have done here you can see the red line here ok so that is how the OGV is made now the first question is median so median will be of course the middle number so at for 30 at 30 on the y axis we will find what is the component on the x axis so what we did was at 30 we have drawn a straight line to the graph which connects me to the to some point on x axis and that value works out to around 36 plus now when you will draw a very fair diagram you will get to see so around 36.1 or 2 okay so second question is upper quartile upper quartile is what is upper what is the total number n is what is n n is equal to 16 what is upper quartile that will be 3n by 4 that is 3 by 4 into 60 so for 45 student number you will find what is the x value so at 45 you have drawn a line this is 45 okay here yeah. okay uh, right and here we get some value uh, yeah okay and that whatever that value that is the answer to b okay now third thing is number of students whose weight is about 37 kg so for that what we will do is at 37 we will draw a straight line to the graph and wherever it connects okay that is the number of students who are below who are not there in 60 so what we'll do is we'll subtract that from 60 and the numbers we get is the yeah, this i made a mistake this is actually b okay and this is this is the answer for b and this is the answer for c okay <coughs> sorry so that is how this question has to be done you have to draw a very uh, clear ogive and then do these numbers thank you and it has been a very very long session and uh, please subscribe this channel we will add many more uh, set of papers so maybe 22, 21, 20 also thank you